This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Humble, Texas. This is our midweek Bible study, uh, Wednesday study for all ages. Uh, this is January the 12th, 2022. This is part four of our lesson that we've been studying, the battle between governments and the people of God, the battle between governments and the people of God. Now what we're going to do, Saints, we're going to look at Dan chapter 11, and we're going to start about verse 28. And this particular study of Daniel is not actually for us to point out all of the different kings that we see identified. Uh, the reason being is because uh, we're choosing a different study to show that no matter what king it was, that government eventually turned its heart against the saints of Almighty God. And so, therefore, uh, we're going to show a point, though, that we know one of these actions we can identify is going to happen after Christ uh, dies and resurrects. And that's going to be our identifying point. So now we're going to go uh, to Daniel chapter 11 around where we ended, uh, verse 28. Uh, and it says, uh, Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. Now this is a mistake this king of the north makes. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. Verse 29 at the time appointed, he shall return and come to all the south. It shall not be as the former or as the latter. And so now remember, these kings, verse 27 says, both these kings, hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table. But it shall not prosper, for the end shall be at the time appointed. So the lies that they were telling, it won't get them what they want because the appointed end time is already done. You know, when you look at Daniel chapter 11, brethren, if you really, there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible that speak of prophecy. People can understand that Darius, Nebuchadnezzar, that's name him in order, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, and we have also his son, uh, and his son being Belshazzar, and we have also Darius the Mede, uh, son of Asherus, who is the one who's going to overtake Belshazzar and become the ruler in that province, and he's going to share the rule with another kingdom, the Persians. So the Medes and the Persians got together, and this is how they were able to rule. And uh, Darius, though, comes in and defeats the king's son, Nebuchadnezzar, son Belshazzar. And then we see Cyrus is a Persian, and Daniel's going to be admired and listened to and dealt with all the way to Cyrus. And then Daniel's going to die. So we see in Exodus with the Medo-Persian kingdom. But Daniel is going to be given information in the future concerning the king of Grecia. And the different kings that will rule in Rome. Uh, now... When you look at Daniel and other books that foretell the future, how the destruction of Jerusalem was foretold, things that were said, you can utilize the Bible as the point of validation. But for those who don't believe the Bible, this is how God gets them. There's no way Daniel can talk about Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, he cannot talk about Darius and Cyrus in any way unless he's involved with them. That means when Daniel's book is written, you can witness he foretells 
of kings that aren't even born yet. That are going to be birthed, be little children like these beautiful little children here. They're going to rise up and become great kings. Some against the one who's already ruling. And then they're going to all fall. And Daniel is right. And he's saying this being of heaven that looks like a jewel. His face and his arms like brass and those things like that. Pot of brass. This being is telling Daniel what's going to happen. It doesn't matter if Daniel lied and wrote this book and made it up. <laughs> Daniel is an awesome future reader because it happens just like he said. So you can take the book of Daniel and tell Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, great kings of the earth today. So, you know, you ought to believe the Bible based on Daniel because you know the history of the world. You know how Egypt was defeated by Rome. You know how the Greeks came in and defeated and fought against Egypt. You know that happened. And Daniel is telling you Egypt is going to get whooped. Egypt is not even being bothered at the time Daniel sees this. It's not being bothered. There's no Grecian or Roman king. There's no Grecian or Roman king yet. And then he's going to say something is going to happen to desecrate the temple. Now, a person could look at that and say, hey, it was prophesied somebody going to desecrate the temple. So I'm going to go and desecrate the temple and they're going to make me. But, but you can't control the kingdom. How are you going to desecrate the temple unless you're in control of Jerusalem? So you might get away with that lie. But you can't get away with the other lie that you got whooped. Because a person who does that is going to get whooped. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can't say that you're going to go and declare war against uh, the land of Israel. You can't do that unless you have the power. Because a lot of, he's going to show in the writing, some of these kings came with big armies. Again, and, and notice Israel Israel, when they are taken out the land, are under bondage through Babylonian, Medo-Persian, Grecian, and Roman rule. Israel never becomes free. So when the law speaks about them being free, he's talking about salvation. They never amass an army. The little stuff that John Maccabees puts together to start a battle because of his distasteful Hatred for the government that's in rule at the time. <laughs> he, doesn't, he, he doesn't gain freedom for the Jews. You see, they're still under Roman bondage when he comes. And they're only given freedom like Rome is like America. That's how America tries to be like Rome. Rome is like, we rule you, but just pay us taxes. Rome declares, okay, y'all gonna pay taxes. It tells the world, Rome, that's always been taxation. But Rome is a government that says, no, nah, I don't want you to just give me stuff and I ask. Y'all going to pay a yearly tax, a monthly tax, whatever it is. Y'all going to pay. All y'all, I'm going to come in, I'll take it. But if you pay the tax, we'll have peace. So Rome starts to tax. And everybody, including Jews, have got to pay. So they let you have a certain amount of freedom. But Israel is never free. Never again. From Babylonian. Child, uh, the Babylonian Chaldeans ruled together. Medo Persian, Greeks to Rome. God is done with them when he pulls them out of the land. And he sends people back to the land after he punishes it for so many years. He says, I'm going to punish the land. I'm going to punish you, land. Punish you. Stuff not going to grow. Animals not going to want to be here. And then he continues to forgive and send him back. Why is that important? Because when God forewarns you, brethren, he's going to carry it out. So from the book of Daniel alone, it is impossible. If Daniel's lying, there's no being he made up himself. It's impossible to guess that many kingdoms. You don't even know what's in those guys are. There are other kingdoms. Egypt is a bad boy. It's a bad boy. But it's going to go down. 
And, and Daniel starts talking about how it's going to go down. And he mentions some people are going to have a little army. So we have a big army. And he writes it. And it happens just like this. From the book of Daniel alone, the Lord can condemn all men to hell for not believing. He's right because the book of Daniel is exact on point. You, you can't even guess who's going to be the next president with accuracy. You can't. I don't care how much money you got and what you want to do. You cannot guess it accurately. Okay, how rich you are. You cannot control the mind and hearts of men. But God knows what's going to be. You know, and he doesn't even have to control it. Yeah, Brother William. That's the power of understanding that when the Lord says, if we don't do what we're supposed to do, something's going to happen to us, go back and read Daniel before you make a decision to go against God because God called every move and it happened. Yeah. Right. Oh, um, but uh, Daniel, so pretty much that Daniel, God gave Daniel a dream, right? Exactly. So, pretty much, he's actually forewarning him because you know the kings, the kings were actually against Jewish people. Yeah, they were trying to they kill. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were going to turn their heart against God, be just like kings of the earth, mm -hmm. including America, turn their heart mm -hmm. against us today. Yeah, at some point. And then he already knew that the fourth king was risen, rising. Mm -hmm. That the fourth richest king was going to be richer than all three kings. Mm -hmm. He knew that. Yeah. So, uh, so what are you trying? What's the point as for the fourth? To get the understanding of it, you okay. know, of why Daniel had gotten the dream. Is, is it for because of the Jewish people? Uh, uh, he was forewarning yes. him that the Jewish people would get actually get destroyed exactly. by the king. Yes. So just give us an in, insight on, on exactly. that. Exactly. That's exactly. I remember when we started, thank you, William. Remember when we started our study, we pointed out that these governments have always been against the people of God, just like your government. I don't care what come out the White House mouth. There's going to always at some point as years go by, as generations develop, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna turn their heart and look at us and do something stupid to us because that's what they do. Not denominations. They just, denominations are trying to act like a Christian. They're not Christian. They're going to look at us and do something stupid like they try to stop us from going to church. They're going to do this. Some nations try to stop us from singing. Or couldn't sing in worship. Canada is one of the biggest fools in existence. Arresting people left and right. Hunting people down. Canada is one of the stupidest nations on the earth as far as through this COVID. I expect China to be a fool, but I didn't expect Canada to be that stupid. I really didn't. China, very belligerent against Christianity. And so he tells them in his writings what this is going to be about. He lets him know it's going to be about what's going to happen to your people. That's what the being comes to tell him. I've come to tell you the being from heaven is not concerned about the battles between the earth. They're all going to die a lot. All the people, all the nations, all the individuals who will have risen up, whatever that, they're all going to die a lot. Except those that became Christians. And the word was spread everywhere. But this being is letting down, you know, I've come to tell you what is going to happen to your people. That's a, a, and that's a good question. William. This is why he starts to talk about that. He wants to let him know what's going to happen to thy people. Why? Because he says, Daniel, you are greatly beloved. And so God says, since I like you so much, I want to show you what's going to happen to your people. That there's going to be hope, but they're going to act a fool with your people, Daniel. And he starts showing him things through Nebuchadnezzar. And he's going to show him ideas concerning the different kingdoms. Because he loves Daniel. And he cares and he wants Daniel to know what's going on. And so, therefore, look at chapter 10 and verse 14. This is the being's mission. 
the barrel jewel colored polished brass arm and foot beam with the gold girdle about it. Down 1014. This is what Williams' question is concerning. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision for many days. As he says, that's why I came here. He said, man, you greatly beloved. The minute you started praying about trying to understand what's going on, you studied Jeremiah. I was dispatched to come tell you. I want you to know what's going to happen to your people. And therefore, this tells all of Israel what's going to happen to their people. And as we read it, we read it as having already happened to let us know God is so awesome. I told you what was going to happen to your people wherever they were at in any land, in any generation, all the way to the very end of time. He's going to talk about the end of time. That's why we're studying this section by section. He's going to talk about the end of time when people start resurrecting from the dead because it's about your people, not mankind. He didn't say mankind. He said thy people. It's always been about the people of God, brethren. It's never been about denomination. It's never been about Buddhist or Muslim. It's always been about God and his people. And you need to make sure you stay the people of God. For you be considered and also ran in a mention as an Egyptian getting squashed in battle. Make sure you're not in that category. Because everything you see, White House, Russia, Canada don't mean nothing. It's already known what's going to happen. Regardless of what they do to the saints, it's curtains for them. It's all about the children of God. Everything you see, including the food, God said, told Paul, write to Timothy and tell him, the food was made to be received with thanksgiving. By who? The people who thank God for what they have. It's everything, everything is about God's people. And anything you see, the world, get, though they have a lot, it's nothing, brethren. Don't get so excited about money and stuff. It means nothing. It's about the people of God. You use the stuff around you and enjoy it. Nothing you're going to accomplish is going to mean nothing to God. If you don't say your soul, it's not, it's not going to mean nothing. It's not, you can talk about, I don't care how many people you fed or what you did. It don't mean nothing to God if you didn't say your soul. Man. Man. Now, you know, in California, they got a government out there, government within the government, where they actually doing a lot of things, you know, uh, to people, businesses and stuff like that. You, you know, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people are actually running away. Mm-hmm. Because of what's going on now, because of the, you know the economy and you know what the government is doing, and what now there uh, is to the point now to where it's like they're trying to get rid of a lot of people in California, <laughs> you know, and that ain't actually they letting out uh, felons uh, that actually committed crimes, horrible crimes, they're letting them out early, mm -hmm. so it's pretty much just starting, mm -hmm. you know. But when you say about the government, the government is it's, you know, it's not our government, mm -hmm. you know, it's not for the people, but what it is, what, 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 what's happening now, just like, because actually the Bible tells you everything about, about uh, nothing up under the sun is new because look what's happening now. Exactly. Uh, the inflation is getting high, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the grocery store, you go to the grocery store, you hardly see, uh, you know, stuff, items on the, pretty much items are almost gone. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and what, what's, what's happening now is that it looks like we just going to have to buckle down as Christians mm -hmm. as we speak now. We can't let fear attack our mindset because we let fear attack us. It, it's it's, it's going to hinder us from, from moving forward. Amen. And it's going to hinder us from, from, uh, from God as well. Right. And when we run away from God, you know, God tends to, it's like this. Uh, if you give God 10%, he's going to give you 5%. You know, if you give him 50%, guess what? He's going to give you 30%. If you give him 100%, he's going to give you 100%. Because you're doing what he say. You're, you're obeying the commandments. You're listening to him. 
So it's like this. When that when, when turmoil hits us, or when destruction hits us, we fold up and we cry. Yeah. And then we get mad at God, we blame God. Mm -hmm. Why is this me? Why why is this happening to me? Because now it's you the one that caused it. Mm -hmm. You know? So like he said, he forewarns us first. He let us know. But if we don't take heed to that, you guess what? It's destruction. Amen. But but people have to understand is that we can't rely on the government. We have to rely on God. Mm -hmm. And if we can't rely on God, who are you gonna rely on? That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like this. Um, when it comes to Christianity, we have to understand where we're at. Mm -hmm. We're in God's hands. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's like this. We can be disobedient sometimes. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So we have to understand is that when it comes to Christianity, when it comes to God himself, we have to learn that he made us. Mm -hmm. We need him. He really don't need us. That's right. You know, and people have to understand that is that we, we do, we have to come to church and offer us to get fed. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't come to church and not get fed, guess what? Mm -hmm. We're going to go back to doing the same thing we've been doing years ago, whatever we used to do. And then guess what? You know, when things happen, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it happens Amen. because of you. Mm -hmm. God bless you, my brother. Well said. You know, you know, amidst this, the power is understanding that God already knew what was going to happen. I hope, so who you want to be with a God that knows what's going to happen or a God like man that don't know what's going to happen? I mean, you just have to, or God like the devil that don't know what happened. He knows what happened. He knows not what's going to happen. So the key is now is that they're being told in advance some awesome stuff. And everything is going to happen. Just Now, this is way, this isn't just a few years. This is hundreds of years in advance. Hundreds of years. They're going to be under 400 years of rule, and God's not going to even talk to Israel anymore. Malachi is complete, and that's 400 years before John the Baptist stands up and starts talking. Anybody said anything before that is just people talking. Yes, there's a feast of light. Yes, it's a celebration that they got into a battle about issues that was going on with the people that were ruling over them. That's still not God's feast. Day. He just allowed them the feast of Purim with Esther. He allowed them to do it. He has three feast days. He, he said, you got to go do it. He allowed that. He allowed that to happen. No feast of Purim, feast of light. It's still, God is saying, I, I'm still not talking y'all during the 400 years that the feast of lights comes in your mind because of your victory. I still haven't said nothing to you. That's how you know God didn't tell him, go do it. But he, okay, you want to thank me for letting you stand up to them? That's fine, but you still have no freedom. Because the freedom God wants you to have is freedom from sin. And it already explained to Israel, look, I gave you the land, man. I paid you in full what I told you I was going to do for you. And you acted to fool me. And what I told you, I was going to throw you out. I do you out. So I brought you back to give you freedom from sin on the day of Pentecost. And that's it. And that's why you see shortly after, which is several years later, Israel's burnt to the ground. Israel was burnt to the ground. Jerusalem, which is the important part of Israel, burnt to the ground. Temple burnt to the ground. Still haven't been erected again and not going to be. He's just not going to let somebody's heart get involved with it. <laughs> He's, I, I tell you, I'm through with y'all. You scatter people and that's it. So, now let's look at this portion because now we see in Daniel 11, uh, around verse 28, this king, one of these old lion kings, he's going to head back, going to have a pocket full of money, going to think it's all good. Sometimes we like that. Got a big army, pocket full of money. But we've seen all these different armies that rose up, well, 10,000. They just couldn't win because God said, nah, <laughs> you're not going to beat him. I don't like either one of you, but you're not going to beat him. And so, verse 29, Daniel 11, 29, then it shall return to us and have great riches, and his heart shall be against the Holy Cup. See, that's going to be the problem. So, the angelic being is telling, the angelic being, Daniel's not telling us a story. The angelic being is telling Daniel a story, and then Daniel tells us 
what he told him. And so he says, he's going, for some reason, this fool is going to look at the covenant, the holy covenant between God and his people and start interfering with it. Just like the foolish people of the land today, what they're doing in California, wherever, China. Just God look at the people of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah we doing it, but I'm talking about that group. That group that is one kind of self Christians only in church of Christ. Well, what, what, what are they about? It just see because Satan is the God of this world. And God is his God. And Satan, he wants to get involved with the people of God. He got everybody else. I want the Christian though. See, that's the jewel. That's the crown jewel. That's the one God like, and that's the one I want. That's why he never lets you have peace. You will never have peace with the name of God stamped on you, living wickedly. He's going to get you. And when you live righteously, he's coming for you. He's looking for you because you're his prize. Satan's prize is to gather in something that belongs to God, not the world. And so he says here, he shall do exploits and return to his own land. And at the time appointed, verse 29, he shall return and come to all the south. So he's going to come back at the south, but it shall not be as a former or as a latter. It's going to be different than the first time he came and at the last. For the ships of Kittim shall come against him. Now, this here word, this is a good word we want to look at. Because we're going we're gonna to eventually get to some target points where we're going to know some time frames that will show us these things. You know, certain things have happened. And when Daniel's talking about the future, Christ is going to come. He's going to quote Daniel. But it hadn't happened yet at the time he quotes it. So uh, uh, these, these uh, ships of Kittim, uh, this particular uh, area here of uh, what Daniel is being told, they're going to come and get in this guy's way. And, you know, this is very detailed stuff. How can you tell such detailed stuff? My goodness. Because there's a God that knows all. Daniel said that in the beginning. He said, no, I, I can't tell y'all. What this golden head thing and all that is. He said, but there is a God that can. He wanted to let Nebuchadnezzar know, it's not me. He said, your, your people right. The Chaldeans can see. Daniel is considered one of, like the Chaldeans because he has the spirit of God telling them things. So he's like, they, he's in the suits there group. So they came to kill him too. But he told the guy, hang on, hang on. Tell the king just wait. So he prays to God. He came back and said, yeah. The child is right. Nobody can tell you a person's dream. He said, but there's a God that can't. Because I'm not coming to tell you because it's me. He said, God is going to tell you what your dream was. And so this word, Chittim, H3794, H3794, is an unused name denoting Cyprus, on an appur, a Kittite, a Cypriot, hence an islander. Generally, the Greeks are the Romans. On the shores opposite Palestine. So did y'all see that? So this is the Greeks or Romans. This area on the opposite side of Palestine. So now we're starting to get some uh, finger pointing here. He's starting to denote some things. So he says in verse 30. For the ships of Kittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved in return. And have any nation against the Holy Covenant. Look he still got a problem with God's. Covenant between him and his people. Do you see Satan at work? Boy, what do you care about God and his people? Because my dad and the devil telling me, take note of it. I want you to do something about this covenant between God and his people. That's why you was told don't go to church. You can't sing. You can't get only 10 people can gather. Man, you better sit out. I sometimes I just want to tell some of these, man, you must, you must be the fool of life. You think you're going to tell. We got saints that are die to worship God. You must be stupid. How many can you kill, fool, before you drop dead? You're not going to tell nobody nothing. You might tell the Baptist, the Catholic, and the Methodist what to do, but you're not going to tell the saint. Now, the ones that did it, they're fools too. Because he already said he got some people that's going to be of God that's going to get with him. That's how stupid the people of God can be. They will side with the enemy, the king of Satan. 
And that's why hell gets a little bit larger all the time. So he says he's going to go against the Holy Covenant. So shall he do. He shall return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Did you see that? Now look at this. Now listen to the word forsake. This is saints that turn their back on the covenant. Oh, this, this, this being from heaven is preaching the gospel. So down and let them know, I'm giving some good news about what happened to people who get involved with foolishness they shouldn't be involved with. He's going to have some saints of God who have forsaken the holy covenant going to teach him some intelligence about what? The holy covenant. Teach this fool how to do what? Deal with God people. What did, what is the problem with the prophet who is already told, Balaam is already told, Balaam is told, don't curse God people. But this fool, because of love of money, goes and tells the Moabites how they can get God people. Let the girls go lure them for sex and then they'll teach them how to worship your God. And you know what God does? He sends Moses and Moses' army and he attacks him and he kills him. And he hunts down Balaam like a little dog and he kills him. And he puts the people's heads up that got involved. And then he takes the women that are birds and say, now y'all can take them for wives. Ain't that amazing? You should have shut your mouth up and did what God said. You didn't curse them. But you backdoored them with information. You gave them intelligence. And that's what's going to bring this fool down. And the saints with him. You're going to always have some stupid saints. It's like the ones got up saying we don't have to go to worship. We shouldn't have went to worship like Robert Harper. See, Robert Harper is like this group. He forsakes the Holy Covenant and sides with the governors of the world. And don't go to church. Isn't that amazing how your brethren live out what God already said don't do? Doesn't that, doesn't, that, doesn't that blow your mind? It blows mine out the water. And that's how I know who to deal with in life. Who to work with. So he says, verse 31, And arms shall stand on his part. You don't have arms. They shall pollute the sanctuary of the strength. Now watch this move. And they shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. We just told you the time frame. We just told you the person. This is talking about wrong. Now watch this. Let's read 31 again. No matter who said, don't like it. Nobody care what nobody like. We're going to read book, chapter, and verse. An arm shall stand on his part. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. What strength? Strength of the people of God. The sanctuary is the strength to the people of God. This gathering is the strength to the people of God. And every gathering on earth like it. Every Bible study. Every worship session is the strength. And they're going to go and pollute the sanctuary. See, you and I make up the sanctuary. 1 Corinthians 3. We make up the church. And they're going to pollute it. And he's going to take away the daily sacrifice. See, they had a sacrifice day. Why is this fool turns hard against the cup? Because my daddy, the devil, doesn't like that y'all still letting them make the sacrifice. Stop that. See, that'll break the people down. Make the sanctuary nasty by going in there. You're not business in there anyway. You're not going there with your heart. And they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. Watch this. That's going to be wrong. We're going to validate. Now we're going to go pull the same thought up. And we're going to show you. And see, Jesus spoke about this before it happened. See, Jesus said, Daniel told y'all, and I'm going to tell you, it hadn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Jesus is going to prove to you it hasn't happened yet. Anybody that said what Daniel said had happened before Christ came is wrong. And he's gone and erased them books as a man. We blew that. You blew it 
like a ship getting blown out the water. He's going to prove it hasn't happened yet. Jesus Christ himself. I would think Jesus would know even more than Daniel. And the being talking when something will happen. Look at, if you will, Matthew 24. Now, your Savior and mine, Jesus Christ. Man, I love to prove Jesus is right just by reading the answer. He's going to tell you that this thing has yet not happened. Now, Daniel 20, uh, Matthew 24 and 1, look what Jesus is going to start talking about. Verse 1, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto him, See you not all these things? Truly I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another. There shall not be thrown down. He said, I'll be thrown down. He said, all the stones are going to be flat. He said, man, they're going to tie this thing up. As pretty as it looks. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. Disciples came unto him privately saying, now watch what three questions they asked. When should these things be? Question one. What should be the sign of thy coming? That's him returning. And of the end of the world. How, how will we know these three things? Now, Jesus is going to start doing some teaching. Jesus has said to him, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It says the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And when you hear that, that's just a start, man. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And shall be hated of all nations. For my name say, do you know who's doing this to them? Rome. Rome is in control already. We proved that through another study of Daniel a few weeks ago. We proved. Rome is doing it. Rome is going to do this to them personally. To the disciples. Not you and me. Because we are already past that time. For his name's sake. He says, notice, all nations are going to help hate you. That's why the being from heaven tells Daniel, I want to tell you about what's going to happen to your people. N not them. Your people. You should be concerned about your people, the saints of God. Then shall they deliver you up, he says. Verse number 10. And then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. They're going to stumble at the word of God. They're going to hate each other. They're going to be selling each other out. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. During this time frame. And because Nicholas shall abound. The love of many shall wax old. Because sin. Because sin abounds. Love goes down. You are out of time to love. The young lady policeman who killed the innocent young black member of the Church of Christ in Dallas. She was what they call sexting, which is sending text messages about having sex with a man she has no right to be involved with. She pushed the wrong flow button and she so into her sin, the door is open. If it had been locked, she'd know I'm at the wrong place. But the door is open. Unlock. When she opens it, walks in as a black man eating pizza on the couch. This vile woman thinks it's her apartment. Now all you gotta do is ask yourself, you know, aren't you a trained policeman? Don't you know how to dress if somebody's in your place? She gets excited and puts enough lead in him to kill him. So what wax cold her love for humanity? You can't shoot a man in the leg from a couch distance. You've got to be one of the lousiest policemen in the world. You can't shoot a dude in the leg. You can't just shoot his feet all up. What kind of lousy training did you get? Or are you just that sorry? Or are you just that sinful? 
Could it be that God is sick of your filthy vileness? I think that has a lot to do with it. Your nasty texting sin. So her apartment was either above or below on the next floor. But in the same, as soon as you get out the elevator, same thing. Watch what you do, brother. Watch what you get yourself involved with. Because God may just say, I'm going to let you fall since you're doing that. I'm going to let you run over, little kid, since you're so high and dry. I'm going to let you kill a kid. That's it for you. And you're going to turn your back on me, and I'm going to put you in hell where you should be. Just it gets, God just gets tired of people sometimes. Since you're doing that, I'm going to let you go. So her life was turned upside down after that day. Innocent black man killed by a white police woman because I'm so into my sin. I forgot all the protocols of what to do when somebody's inside any apartment that's been called for burglary. You couldn't see somebody eating pizza? Did you think somebody's going to really... I know it happened, but you really think? And then they're going to tell you what? And they're going to act like you're in the wrong place? But you're vile and you're nasty. Brother Paul McKissadek helped teach uh, that young man about the Bible. He's from the islands. He's from St. Croix. Isn't this a small little whirlwind? Nevertheless, the family forgave her. The young brother of his sibling led in forgiveness, praying for her that she changed. So it says uh, in verse, as we get ready to wrap up, verse 12, because Nicholas shall wax Abound the love of men, it shall wax cold. It shall abound love of men, it shall wax cold. Verse 13. But he that shall endure to the end, saints shall be saved. Now watch what else. Jesus is going to tell you who is the government that Daniel does not name. Because the being didn't tell him. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Paul said in Colossians 1, the gospel had been preached to all the world while he was writing Colossians. Guess who told him not the Holy Ghost? Paul, at this point, all the world heard the gospel. While you writing, write that down. So Jesus, Jesus dead old still, isn't he? Jerusalem had been destroyed. He didn't hadn't came back yet when Paul writes. Dead old so far. When you therefore, so he's going to tell the disciples, here goes a signal. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, meaning what? It hadn't happened yet. I'm still on the earth. I haven't died. haven't resurrected. haven't talked to y'all. haven't stepped on no cloud. haven't sent the church down. Nothing yet. When you see them, this thing that was going to happen after all that's done, he says, spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. That's what he's going to do. He's going to stand in the holy place. He is the abomination that makes the. He is the vile, nasty dog standing in a place that only the holy should stand and desecrate. He said, that's a signal. Now nah, it's on. It's on for Israel. It's on for Jerusalem. When you see him in your house, don't come out the roof. Run for the hill. This hope is not willing. Hope you're not having no Baby that need milk from mama. It's going to be drama. That's why he told people, don't cry for me. He told the women, cry for your children. Y'all going to, y'all fixing to get it. I'm all right. Y'all fixing to get it. Whoso read it, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. They have the text. Let them which on the house top not come down and take the things out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Don't do it. And war to them that with child and them that give suck. Pray your flight be not in winter. He's going to stop. Every time it's cold and I'm like, I've been some bitter cold day. I'm like, oh, man, I see exactly what Jesus meant. Man, I'm glad ain't nobody chasing me, trying to kill me. Now it's cold. You ever been trying to run for someone that's cold? Everything around you is lousy and it's cold. And you're being chased like a dog to be killed. So I said, hope it's not in the winter, man. Snow and stuff around. Oh, my goodness. You out there in the cold, and they looking for you. I think he over here. Bitter, sad. So now we know Rome going to be the government. Once again, we've proven twice that Rome is the government. Two different lessons. 
that's going to act a fool and stand in the wrong place, being vile and unwanted and not the people of God. And that's going to be the beginning because the Lord is going to say, okay, that's it. That's the signal. The temple is nasty. I don't want it. I hate y'all anyway, you Jews and y'all, the people. I'm going to have them come in and clear water. They're going to tear this down. I'm going to finally get my glory to burn this crummy place down. That's what he did to Ruth. He'll do the same thing to your individual life if you let Satan's ideas stand in your heart and replace God. And then that abomination will make you desolate, unwanted by the Lord. See, the Lord not like us. Once he clean us and you become desolate, as I said, I'm done. I don't even want to talk to you no more. We through. Don't let that happen to you, brethren. We'll stop here if you're here now. Remember the church. Recognize the gospel is what you need and I need, like Brother Keith Henson said, is the answer to all of our troubles. First Corinthians 15 and verse number 1. The Bible says, But well, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received and where you stand, by which you are saved. You're saved by the gospel. You stand in it. If you keep in memory what I preach on you, unless you have believed in me. God bless you, brother. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I saw see, how that Christ died for sins, according to the scripture. That's another prophecy, that Christ would die, according to the scripture. He was buried, that was prophesied, and then he rose again the third day, according to the scripture, just like the gospel said. He was seen as he was in the 12, Verse 8, and last of all, seen of me. Also, as one of born, I do time. That's a powerful statement to say he's last seen of me. You know why? Because it kills every false, fake person saying they're apostles. You can't be one. You can't be an apostle after this statement. This is the last one, son. Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. Jesus himself said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 36. Yeah. Peter says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus even crucified, both Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, said to Peter, the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? The saved of God don't even know what to do. You know why? Because they're no longer the saved of God. They have become the children of God given grace to be saved. Because God has 120 saved people in his church at this point. Awesome answer. Awesome understanding. And it's not the Jews who still believe in Judaism. God said, well, I'm not through. I'm going to destroy the temple later. But right now, I'm done. I'm done with you. Why? Because you don't listen to me. So I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to send Christ. I'm going to give you one more chance. Some of us are on our last chance. Will that tree, three years he's been dealing with us. So they put some manure around it. One more year you get. Not three more, one more. And then if it's not, he says, let's then we cut it down. But God wants to cut it down. And so Christ says, one more year. Let's give me one more year with them. Are you on your last year? Ask yourself. You on your last year? I'm going to ask myself. Are you on your last year? Don't mess up. Not this time. Because he's going to do his father will. Take the hatchet and cut it down. Now, be careful, brethren. He says, Then Peter said, Repent and be baptized. Everyone in your name of Jesus Christ for admission of sins. So that's when sins are removed. Not before, not after. And you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this stuff about mourners bench and howling and crying is a lie. He said then. He said then. So you're on your last year. You got to get it now. There are many words that he testified. Testify what? For the promise unto you and to your children to all that are off, even as the Lord God shall come. With many other words he testified, in addition to that, and exhort. Saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they glad to receive his word of baptized. The same day they were added to them about 3,000 souls. What did they do after baptism? Go out and get drunk, have a party? No. He says, and they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Fellowship, which the walk in the light is Christ in the light. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. Acts 2.47, the Lord 
as the church daily, such as should be saved. Acts chapter 8 explains, even if it was Joe Biden, even if it was Barack Obama, you got to tell him about the gospel. And he said, he, you said, Mr. Obama, I can take you over here and baptize you too, Mr. Trump. I can take both of y'all over here. I can baptize you in this pool of water. This pool is deep enough. Well, can't you just say something? No, we got, I got to baptize. Get my wife baptized because I'm like, no, she can't baptize you. I got to baptize. How about your wife? No, I got to baptize you. Because I'm the man, and I just gave you the word, and I'm going to be authorized to be the conduit. Like your wife has to have a baby, you have to be birthed with me involved. So what does this man do when he hears that? Verse 35, Then Philip opened his mouth, began at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. As they went on the way, they came to certain water, and the eunuch said, See, it's water. Well, then he didn't be baptized. He had to argue with the eunuch. He read it. He know I'm a great man. I'm of a whole nation. I'm telling you not, man. I know I'm lost. Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the church to stand still. They went down both to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. We know it was successful because they went away rejoicing. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, for by one spirit, the Bible says, are we all baptized into one body? That's the church, Colossians 1.18. Whether it be Jews or Gentile, whether it be my friend, have all been made to drink to one spirit. Does it say? 1 Peter 3, 21. You know, one of the worst things we can do is think, well, if I don't believe, that's going to make grandma saved. Or Uncle Ned. I remember telling at more than one saint, do you know by you not getting baptized, your relative still is lost that died. And you're going to join them lost if you don't get baptized. They got baptized within days after that statement. Because they knew I, I can't save them by not getting baptized. I've got to acknowledge that this is the only way. 1 Peter 3, 21, the life figure went to even baptism was also not save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is going on in heaven on the right hand of God, angels, stars, and powers. And he made subject unto him. So what do we do if Satan come after us because he's mad we didn't got in his way? He's got me some physical issues. Hold on. Revelation 2, 10, fear none of those things with thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. You want to get baptized? Call that number. Touch a little V-shaped object. Drop down button. Several numbers. We can get you baptized wherever you live. If you're here, stay standing when we sit down, that you can be baptized. But if you're here and you're a member of the church, you've gotten off track, you need prayer. Come now, but together we stand and sing.